Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to have a look at some best practice tips on how to install the Drayton range of TRVs. Okay so here's a radiator that I've just mounted to the wall and the packing bungs have been removed from the ports. Flow and return pipes have been brought in. I just haven't installed the radiator tails yet because before I do that I need to decide where the thermostatic radiator valve is going to go, where the lock shield is going to go and indeed what my options are at this stage. The way the pipe work is arranged, this is the flow side, but because I'm using the 15mm angled body that's got the double headed arrow, that means it's bi-directional, so I don't need to be worried about flow direction. So one option is to have the head in this orientation on the flow side, or you could have it in the same orientation but on the return side. Or you could roll it through 90 degrees and fit it so the head is in the horizontal plane. Now this is a less common method of fitting, but still a perfectly viable one. I also have the option of fitting them at the top. Again, doesn't matter which side on either the floor or return because I've got that bi-directional body. But the stipulation here is it must be in the horizontal plane if it's at the top of the radiator. So I couldn't fit it like this because the heat from the radiator is going to have an impact on the sensing head. So my decision is to have the thermostatic radiator valve on the flow and the lock shield on the return as this matches the rest of the radiators that are on this system. So now a quick look at the Drayton products that are going to be fitted for this installation. So here I have the chrome lock shield. We do do them in white as well, but the chrome is a little more decorative and you can see it comes with two caps. The chrome cap is the locking cap and the white cap with the scallops on it is the cap that you would use for making your adjustments. Next we've got the radiator tail for the lock shield. It comes assembled like this with the nut and the olive on the radiator side of the tail. But you can take that off and just install that onto the bottom of the lock shield. So you can preload the olive in there ready to, to accept the 15mm pipe. And then the tail piece screws on to the other port on the lock shield. Now I'm showing these as separates here but check our website for the part numbers to get these as a pack. But in the box we again have got a tail piece like we saw before with the nut and the olive on the other end so that needs to go onto the input of the, the body and then the tail piece screws on to the other port as before. Now the olive is self-retained on the tail piece, it's already clamped down. You can then remove the decorator cap and you want to retain this because it's not just there to protect the valve body, it's also designed to be installed when you want to remove the radiator and prevent flow. So like we saw before to fit the head, turn to maximum and then you can choose any one of those 72 serrations to get the head to the position that you want. So that's the setup going to be for this radiator. On the flow side we're going to have the TRV and on the return side the lock shield. Now back at the radiator we're going to firstly install the tail pieces so that's essentially going to go into that part of the radiator but because there's no seals on there we need to make sure that the threads are sealed so some wraps of some PTFE tape or you can get the liquid now just making sure here using the tape that the wraps are in the right direction so that the action of screwing it in doesn't unravel the tape and it should be a good nice snug fit. Screw it in finger tight to start with and then finish off with your wrench just to take the square shoulders of the tailpiece up to being almost flush with the side of the port and that means then that you've got enough threads inside the radiator. Next comes the valve body and that can be screwed onto the tail remembering that that olive has already been compressed at the factory so you don't need to compress it here you just need to make sure that uh, locking nut is tight and I also leave the decorator cap on throughout this process just to protect those threads that hold the head onto the body you don't you want to make sure you don't inadvertently damage those in any way. I can now bring in the radiator tail that comes up from the floor and I can offer it up and make my mark on the other end where the pipe it needs to be cut to connect the flow. And then at the radiator end, I firstly install the valve nut, followed by the olive. And once that's on the pipe, I can then push the pipe up into the recess of the TRV valve body, bring up the nut 
so that it retains the olive. And on this one, we will need to compress that olive. So do it up finger tight, and then we can get the tool on it. And the technique here is to torque down the nut enough so that we get a good watertight seal by compressing the olive, but not too much that we end up deforming the pipe. And it's always worthwhile supporting the whole assembly with another wrench like I'm doing here so that we're not putting all of that torque through the radiator tail and indeed the radiator port. We can now remove the decorator cap to ensure that the valve is fully open ahead of filling and pressurizing the system. Right, that's one end done. Now we'll turn our attention to the other end that's going to have the lock shield fitted. Now once again, the interface between the radiator and the valve body is going to be the radiator tail. So like before, we've got a tail that's had the wraps of PTFE tape around it to seal it and that can be wound in exactly the same as on the other side. Now we also do drain off uh, versions of the tailpiece. So it's worth having a look in the product catalog for tailpieces, they're called drain off tailpieces, and they're slightly longer and they allow you to be able to connect a hose to drain the system. But they're also useful if you need extra length between the radiator and where the tail comes out of the floor. So with that fully screwed in, to the radiator port we can now fit the lock shield which is again exactly the same principle as we did with the valve body with the pre-compressed olive on the tail and then we bring our radiator tail out of the floor mark it off this time where it's going to connect to the return pipe and fit it to the lock shield body with the nut on first followed by the olive so you end up with this arrangement and then the end of the pipe can be inserted up into the recess of the lock shield, finger tight on the nut and then we need to get the tools in there to tighten the nuts on both the input to the lock shield which has got the pipe with the olive that needs compressing and also the tail which is leading into the radiator and like before important to support when doing this. And now we can turn our attention to the ports on the radiator that we didn't use for our controls. So these are both at the top and those are going to be filled with one side a vent and the other side a plug. And these are supplied as part of the fixing kit that comes with the radiator. So on the side of the rad that has the TRV body, that side needs to have the blank or the plug fitted. Now there's no need for any thread tape on this because it has an O-ring already pre-installed. So screw that in and tighten it up. And then on the opposite side to where the TRV body is, or you might say the same side as the lock shield, that is where we are going to fit the vent to be able to bleed the radiators, but also to vent the air out when we're going through the filling process. Again, no need for any thread tape. There's an O-ring on there screw it in and nip it up with the wrench. And that completes the installation process for the controls for this radiator. Now before we start filling this system, we want to make sure that all of the valves are open. So we want to make sure that the water is not going to be stopped or indeed any air trapped. So you want to remove the locking cap from the lock shield and install the adjuster cap so remove the centre screw, install the white plastic cap that's got the scallops on it so that you can get some purchase with your fingers. Pop the screw back in. It's important to do that so that everything stays nice and tight and it doesn't slip off. And then you can open that lock shield all the way so it's wide open. And with the lock shield backed off all the way and the head or the decorator cap removed from the TRV body, we are now, now ready to be able to fill the system. The last part of the installation process is to fit the sensing head to the valve body. So turn it to maximum. That will take any loading off of the pin. So the pin that's coming out of the valve body won't be touching the pin that's up inside the head. You can then use the serrations to locate its appropriate position and turn the locking ring clockwise to finger tight and that will lock the head onto the body. You don't need to use a tool for that 
and then once that's done you can set the appropriate comfort setting. Should you need to remove the head, turn to maximum and undo the locking ring and the head will come off in your hand. Now if you want to remove the sensing away from the heat source, for instance if the radiator was inside a cabinet, we've got two options for remote sensing. So instead of installing the standard head, this head here has got a two meter capillary that goes out to a remote sensor. So the actual sensing head itself still fits on top of the valve body, but instead of responding to the immediate air temperature that surrounds the head, it instead responds to the temperature seen by this, this remote sensing bulb. Now this has got a cradle that it sits in that can be screwed to the wall. So you would screw that to the wall, then you would clip the sensing bulb into it, and then the cover can simply be clipped over the top. And this is likely to sit on a skirting board or somewhere where the air temperature that it senses is more representative of what's going on in the room compared to what's near the radiator. And it's also very important that this capillary is not cut or bent at too acute an angle, otherwise the system won't work. Any excess needs to be coiled up and stored discreetly. Now this is a really nice way of being able to remove the sensing away from the heat source, but assuming these were inside radiator cabinets, you wouldn't be able to get to them to make changes to your comfort setting. So for this we have another remote sensing option, which is to use a standard sensing head, but in the middle you install our ETF2 kit. So here you've got a 2 meter capillary. So instead of installing a standard sensing head onto the valve body, here we've got the 15mm angled body again, but this is just as applicable to all of the EB bodies that are in our range. So you screw the ETF2 kit onto the valve body, and on the other end of that capillary you've got a terminal that you can screw to a wall, and then once that's fixed you can then install a standard sensing head, here I'm using the TRV4 Classic, but this will work equally as well with the RT212 or the RT414. And then you've not only got remote sensing, but you've also got remote control of your comfort setting. Now if we have 8mm or 10mm pipework feeding our radiators, we have a solution for that in the form of these bullet connectors. So we still use a 15mm body, so either angled or straight, but instead of using the 15mm olive that you would use normally, you replace that with these bullet connectors, the 10mm one or the 8mm one, depending on what your requirement is. So it, you still use the nut on the back of the body but where the olive would normally sit you will have instead this bullet connector so you need to make sure you put them in the right way around so that when the nut goes on the bottom of the valve body is flush that's then ready to accept in this case an eight millimeter pipe now when we're using a 15 millimeter olive we're just looking to compress the olive onto the pipe with these we're actually looking to shear the bullet connector in half and it's the shearing action that allows for the seal to be made. So you can see here on this pipe this is a bullet connector that has been sheared and it's been compressed and you can see the difference between that and one that hasn't been used yet. Once compressed the bullet connector is retained on the pipe and can easily be assembled and disassembled at will. So we know for an application like this we would use our standard 15mm angled body, but how about if we've got pipework that comes out of the wall rather than up from the floor? We still want to be able to have the sensing head in the same orientation, and this is where our corner angle bodies come in. And these are available in compression for copper, but also BSP for iron pipework. But the thing to note here is the flow direction arrow. So these are not bi-directional and you have to choose either corner angle left or corner angle right, depending on the direction of flow. Now, typically you'd have two of these, either two lefts or two rights. On one side, you would fit the sensing head of your choice. In this case, we're using a TRV4 Classic. And on the other side, instead of a lock shield, you would have a chrome decorator's cap. And now to our bodies that are designed to accept a BSP thread. So this is a single pipe body. 
but we've also got a straight commercial body here. And these are designed to accept a thread, the appropriate size thread for the pipe that's been cut onto the end of the pipe using a die, and that will thread in to the input on the valve body. Now, none of these are bi-directional, so you need to observe the flow direction arrow on all of our bodies except for the 15 mil angle that we featured before. We also have commercial lock shields. Again, you've got the tail that goes into the radiator, but on the other end, it's designed to accept a male BSP thread appropriate to the size of pipe. These are set and adjusted using a hex key. So as we are fitting TRVs to this system, we need to consider the necessity for a bypass. That is somewhere for the water to flow once all of the TRVs on the system have closed because they've achieved their comfort setting. So that's where one of these comes in. This is an auto bypass valve. And the idea is that as the pressure in the system rises due to the TRVs closing as they reach their comfort setting, the valve will then start to open and allow the flow to be dumped into the return, thereby giving the water a path through the system. Now these are adjusted and what you're doing is you're adjusting the tension that at which the diaphragm opens and you do that by screwing down the red cap. And these need to be fitted across the flow and return so you will tee off both the flow and the return and you will go in to the ports on the auto bypass valve. Thanks for watching this training video and if you need any more information or resources head over to our website drayton controls.co.uk